unfortunately yesterday I dropped my brand new battery it nicked a little corner out the plastic uh, I taped it up with duct tape because it was leaking some battery acid but we'll take it to the shop now and see um, if something can be done the air vacuum is sorted and the truck is starting fine I filled up this tank yesterday with oil and I noticed another leak I'll have to chip this off and see what's going on with the weld plan is to braze this as but there's a small crack over there Just I'll need to drain the tank again I'll put some air into it and pressurize it and see if there's any air coming out. I took this thing out um, the bottom of the tank. How this works is that you open this up and it's got a little plunger inside. You can set the amount of air that can go through this fitting. And now that the plunger is, is uh, slightly in, this is airtight so it's going to help me to pressure test um, the tank so yapi came up with this cool concept of getting uh, the fuel from this tank to that tank without having to install a pump but it needed to push the oil through those filters as uh, the compressor tanks are right next to the fuel tank install this uh, three-way pipe that hooks on to there so once this tank is filled with air I can open this valve slightly uh, and it fills this tank up it forces the fuel through this line and into the filters over there that is open that is closed. I open this valve, air will come out there. Slowly close this up, pour some water on there and see if I can see any bubbles. If I can't, that means there's no leaks. Put some pressure on the tank. Yeah. So mark these four little spots and we'll have to fix that main brake cylinder over there. And that's got two brake fluid containers and the one. That's cracked. Maybe I'll hold on to this little container, but I'll chuck that. I got a new one, so I'll install this. It's rust probably caused by this little flap it was broken a couple of months ago and standing open so I think the water seeped in there we fixed that um, we also didn't spray the truck with clear coat when we resprayed it because we were worried about things like little nicks like that and we'd have to touch up anyway so I've got to cut this rust out now um, put some body filler in it and repaint it once all of those touch-ups are done we can do the clear coat I cleaned off the engine with some degreaser and the pressure hose. Oh, the pressure hose kind of did its work on the paint. Um, I'll take the whole hood off.
the truck as it's the last bit to spray the clear coat. Uh, Yolani is bringing you through now. later it is looking silky smooth unfortunately I've got two little marks right there the other one being over there the rest of the truck is fine though she is going to Africa so we're not going to try and be too fancy about it 
One thing that you'll notice if you're building your own truck is that you'll probably run into issues that you could have avoided. Scuffed on the prop shaft, it'll have to be replaced. A lot of the times you'll see that the aftermarket parts are not as great as the original parts. I've broken two of these feelers because the plastic's very hard. Um, whereas the original one, this one flexes quite a lot. This one, not so much. Uh, exciting stuff today. I'm going to start to look at um, cutting the crawl through space um, from the body to the cab. At first I was thinking of cutting this this block out. It's a bit of a challenge when it comes to space because I'm going to cut this side and the outer one of that side and then we might make a little frame and do it similar to a steel window frame. I'm just going to go see Ben quickly. He might have a piece of steel lying around that I can fit in there. <laughs> I knew coming to Ben would be a good idea today. Um, he does have an off-cut piece of angle iron um, that'll work perfect and we just came up with a plan. We're going to use these latches. Ben gave me some goodies. These four really cool latches. Two hinges lying around, angle iron and a snake capture. That piece of off-cut stainless steel mesh and that will come in handy with the windows. The plan is to cut this out, build a frame with the angle iron that fits in there, hinge it at the top so that it flips open the maximum size that I'm going to get it. This is where the battery is located. So there's going to be a carpeted platform. Um, if we need to crawl through, hands and knees and crawl forward. On the ground, Drop these um, latches in some degreaser and I can repaint them. around the scrap heap, found this plate and I just got to make a door that fits into that so this is nice and thick um, so it'll be easy to weld on there. Looking pretty good, that looks clean. cut this plate to size but I quickly realized that this plate is going to be a bit too heavy instead I found this piece of um, flat plate it's the mud flaps from the old drop size body so I'm on my way to Ben now with um, my little frame and my plate so Ben's got a plasma cutter. I've never used a plasma cutter before, but um, he said he was gonna um, show me how it works and, and that I could get much more precise lines, um, straight lines with the plasma cutter.
sealing up the crawl through space. I've got a shoulder operation tomorrow and hopefully the next video um, will be the box. That's where things really get exciting. So We're on our way to Wendy, a market friend of ours. She'd like to sponsor some used vegetable oil. I went in for my shoulder up for for three months um, and I won't be able to use the shoulder much. So today I'm um, uh, obviously in this thing. So Yolani is going to be doing the work. First thing we've got to do is fill this tank with oil. On the last video I closed this little valve up. She's got to open that up. We're going to test out this um, pump today for the first time um, and actually see if our concept works. We got some plumbing fitting and we're gonna pipe this pump up and then see if the system works. Pipe set up, connected from that side over to there. That's our breather, that's our ingoing. That can go straight into the tank, but of course, you've got to prime this first, so that's why we've got the valve there. Our theory is that we have to prime this pump with oil, so we're going to use one of those um, to prime it. We've got the step open, she's going to hold this up. Sorry, my mind's so cool. Then we're gonna close the valve so it keeps all of the oil in in the line. Put this piece inside the drum, put on the pump, open the valve slowly and then it that should In preparation for the living cell or the box we've decided to add some extra pieces to the torsion free subframe we did have these pieces cut a couple of months ago and they were lying around in the workshop call it peace of mind might as well install them we've got to put a piece of little conveyor belts in between the plate and the chassis Drill some holes in the in the chassis from the top uh, with 16 mil bolts weld these uh, to the plate Bug is going to be my hands today. Hey, shady baby, I'm hot like the prodigal sun. Big a battle, any mini money, more and flower, you're the chosen one. It's 
it's uh, late afternoon, me and Lucy be starting to work on a plan here for a bash plate, just to protect the winch. We got this nice big plate. On the edges here, we'll mount two pieces of angle iron and cut the plate to size. You'll see that the winch at the bottom um, can easily get full of mud. We want to protect the winch as much as we can and then also make it a little bit more difficult um, if ever somebody wanted to steal it. Bugs did a decent job with the welding over there. So we ended up buying uh, another pump. This one, you don't have to gravity feed it and you don't have to prime it. You can just put it straight into the container. It'll suck up air as well as fuel. Of course, I've got my valve that will let some air escape. But the idea is just to take the pipe out. Um, it's actually got a nice little filter at the front. I pop that in the container, uh, switch on this little switch, and then that'll pump into the tank. We'll add some hinges. It'll have a little flap that closes up and it locks from the bottom so that nobody can actually steal the pump off the, the fitting. yesterday to, to film it. Pugs in here, Lundy sorted the system out for us. It wasn't working great, um, the plastic fitting kept breaking. When we installed it we were working with what we had. So we replaced that with a galvanized elbow, so that'll be a lot stronger. Um, that connects straight to the pump, the pump can lock up like that. We've lost our air valve over there, the release valve, installed it over there. We'll fill up with the tank, um, this will be open and that'll be closed. Um, the air will go into the tank, sending the oil through to the other tank. When we're done, um, close this valve off and open this one to release the excess air. to test this system. We are pumping some air into these tanks. Um, then we'll open this valve. This one unhooked from this diesel tank. managed 
to finish the splash plate. Um, we'll install that as soon as we've tested out the winch. I'm going to pull the truck out. This is the armature for the starter for the winch. It's It's got a slight bevel in it as the brushes have started wearing it. Benya is just gonna put it on a, a lathe for me. Another issue we had was that the brushes on the electric starter was finished, and so I got some new brushes. Yelani's got to modify the, the brushes a little bit. The old brushes are slightly smaller than the new brushes, um, and it has to fit exactly. Boosie took the solenoids out of the winch and it seems two of the solenoids are burnt. It's broken well. So this one, this one was supposed to join this one here. So I've got to get two new solenoids and we can move on. We might need four of them because they are four. We managed to get some new solenoids. We've got two of these ones. I was actually hand built in the 70s for the mining industry so it's no surprise that it needed some minor repairs notice that we use this uh, bench vise quite a lot Gary my granddad gave me this little miniature um, bench vise and I'm gonna clean it up and paint it what I'd like to do with it is mount it right here on the bumper I'll make sure that it's spaced so that nothing touches the light or the fender. Avoiding any uncomfortability Oh hi, it's you again Please can we just keep it short and sweet It's best if we pretend That we both have somewhere else to be the solenoids and the brushes unfortunately there's a bit of a noise on the gearbox that little gear on the shaft is slightly loose 
and what we're going to do is just cut a washer big enough to slide over this shaft and then we're going to weld it to the box and that should keep everything nice and secure so we've decided to rather go for a, a nut instead of the washer as the nut is slightly thicker and so that'll make the shaft more stable Now and see if everything works fine. 